Welcome to Sequeled. This week, we're talking Upgrade 2. My name's Blaze. And I'm James. So Upgrade was a movie that came out this year. It's Bloomhouse Productions, B.H. Tilt. Mm -hmm. I actually really like B.H. Tilt's like arm of uh, distribution because they always put out something good. And let's be honest, Whiplash was mm -hmm. B.H. Tilt, so they produce Academy Award movies. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anyways, it, it, this was a surprise. It was Lee Winnell's, is this his directorial debut? Yes. Or wait, no, I think he did one Insidious movie. But it's his first, like, solo project where it's mm -hmm. not, like, a franchise worked with James Wan. Got it. It was a great original movie. I mean, you could say, oh, maybe it wasn't that original because, you know, it, it grabbed from a lot of films. It was heavily inspired by, like, 80s VHS culture, I felt mm -hmm. like. But it did a really good job at that and like yeah. it was just a fun surprise like you you went in not really expecting much uh and then just were surprised because it's somewhat original story yeah. and it's just a lot of fun like it's balls to the wall gory mm -hmm. but then like dark comedy which he's really good at we've seen in some of mm -hmm. his other films even at, in acting roles like yeah. uh cooties right and it so. didn't seem fake at all too like it seems like or well of course everything in it's like yeah. non-realistic but it just didn't seem like it was trying too hard with its sci-fi future I thought. yeah they yeah. did a great job at like it had a good like sci-fi future like drive like takes place in reality mm -hmm. but like still feels like oh this is like kind of a fantasy movie yeah where like it was like a sci-fi movie but didn't overly like okay this is the car like but it didn't like overly explain like this the elements of the world that like i robot i felt like yeah. So, yeah yeah exactly yeah. it was like goes in explaining everything way too hard mm -hmm. so anyways i'm gonna get right into it upgrade two or upgrade part two parts like robot parts oh, nice. i don't know yeah. i don't know i just made that up right now but i felt like i have something going there. is that the colon subtitle that yeah parts yeah or something i don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> upgrade two parts uh, -huh. uh anyways so the story is following stem which is in gray's body like it took over gray the main character's right. body it's stem is that little chip so stem has taken over his body we saw at the end of the first film gray is just in it like he's in like fantasy land his mm -hmm. wife is back he's with his wife asha in the hospital bed so he's living this fantasy life because his mind broke mm -hmm. but did it that's where we're going. I don't know. Well, anyways, I'm going to get to that in a moment. Anyway, STEM has used Vessel, which was the company that Aaron Keese, that like weird emo guy, like yeah. his like, you know, it was like an augmentation cybernetics company that had taken over like that industry. And basically people loved it. It's like the Apple of the future, essentially. Right. So uh, STEM has been using Vessel to mass produce STEM augmentations, but they're coming to market. Mm -hmm. So he's using their headquarters and their uh, manufacturing arm to create these augmentations. They're eventually going to come to market, but currently they've only been mandatory issue for the police. Mm -hmm. So all police have like a STEM implanted yeah. and have like, they're basically working for, it's confusing because stem is what it's called but also right. the main character robot is called stem Good so yeah. just bear with me anyway stem is using these other using the, basically the police of this city and they never really like went into where it was but he's using the police like they're like part of like think invasion of the body snatchers mm -hmm. really they're like basically infiltrated society right and they're waiting to like just take over the rest of everything so that they can live this perfect utopian life mm -hmm. with no crime, nothing, mm -hmm. and just take over everything. So anyway, STEM is like about to go to mass market, be like a consumer. You, you could buy it. Like it's like an iPhone. Oh, I'm going to uh -huh. get the new augmentation. I'm going to get this new implant. And then I can just do whatever. I don't know what they're going to sell it as. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I could see through walls. Pass your test. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do everything faster. Do everything uh, like 100 million percent. Yeah. Like or just mark it as you do everything at 110 yeah. percent all the time. So anyways, it's going to go to mass market. But currently Cobalt, which is the company that Asha Gray's wife worked for. It's mm -hmm. like the other augmentation company wasn't as good as Vessel. Cobalt has like was basically left in ruins mm -hmm. by STEM, like just punching out everyone and right. killing yeah. everyone in the movie. Like Cobalt, like what's left of it is like basically some hackers have like partnered with the Cobalt augmentations mm -hmm. unit or whatever's left of them. And they're going to fight like they're basically they know like that. They just don't want STEM to like go out like whether they know how bad it is mm -hmm. or what or they're just like it's corporate like fighting. Mm -hmm. They realize like they need to do like shady things like attack like the headquarters and stop it from coming to mass market. Right. So like they're about to launch this attack onto uh, Vessel's headquarters. 
But Stem, little does he know that Gray just wakes up like <laughs> it's, it gets like basically it's going to be Gray and Stem fighting for like control of the body again. Mm-hmm. Because basically he lived out his life in this fantasy world. But when he lived out the his life and died, mm-hmm. like he's like all of a sudden waking up again. Right. So I don't really know. Maybe I might be breaking some rules here. Mm-hmm. But there are no rules. So that was the fun thing about the original movie was seeing Stem and Grey fight for this control of this body. Grey slowly relinquishing more and more control and Stem just being the mastermind. But now we have Grey taking over the body and maybe mm-hmm. Stem just like, maybe a corrupted, short-circuited something, mm-hmm. but it's not there anymore. And Grey is in like a bad position, basically. Like he's now like the like the head of everything Mm -hmm. he doesn't know what's going on he didn't even know that he left his body and how much like ground stem was able to like control people and it's like basically being like think of like invasion of the body snatchers but you just woke up in the leaders Mm -hmm. in the leader's body and it's like uh okay so it might create like some comedic elements to the film like it's not gonna be a flat out comedy it's still gonna be a a crazy action movie but i was just thinking that would be an interesting plot would be think of invasion of the body snatchers Mm -hmm. but you wake up as the leader and everyone's like ready like what are we gonna do now master Mm -hmm. what are we gonna do now sir and it's like wait what and like are you feeling all right yeah you know (laughs) i like the element of not being able to know who to trust like i mean that's why invasion of the body snatchers has been remade so many times Mm -hmm. also it's just because of the concept of like you know bringing that level suspense where it could be horror or psychological or just a plain ass thriller Mm -hmm. something yeah so i think it works well and i think like also with the idea with cops uh you know, uh, the cops like slightly getting corrupted by STEM or something. You can bring in some interesting new technology that we didn't see in the first one and stuff. Mm-hmm. So that'll be fun. I was definitely inspired by RoboCop, how it's about, you know, the cops slowly relinquishing power to these either RoboCops or that like literally robot yeah. cop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then like it kind of infiltrating the mm-hmm. police. So I wanted to include that also because in the original upgrade, the police is such a huge like subplot of the mm-hmm. movie it was was them like they could do all this stuff but they're like stopped by all the caution tape like they can't go as far as what gray wanted them to do to find the killer of his wife but now with stem they don't care about caution tape anymore and definitely also another thing you got going for is there's no necessarily good guy so it just could just be like flat out violent as hell so yeah Mm -hmm. definitely yeah you have no one you're really rooting for like we know like in upgrade that's the thing with like gray you feel sorry for him yeah but are you really like rooting for him you're kind of just like rooting to see like the violence essentially and him getting his revenge yeah you're rooting for him to get his revenge but like you don't even really know exactly where the revenge is like supposed to be placed and then it just kind of gets like it gets like convoluted somewhat but it's just a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I kind of wanted to just turn that up a notch. I wanted to say maybe upgrade this sequel to upgrade, you know, mm-hmm. like just turn up the turn up the amplitude, yeah. make it crazy. And I think just, you know, on a bigger scale, more stems involved. Yeah. But keep the budget still small. But like yeah. I think like it's gonna be another I think it's definitely a great sequel to make now because it was a sleeper hit like it was made for i believe like a million dollars and you know made way more than that at the box office no it wasn't like a huge you know 50 to 100 million dollar making movie that would have been nice but it way it way exceeded its budget and i think with it going to netflix or one of those streaming services soon it's just going to keep building and getting a huge audience definitely so anyways guys that's it for this week's sequel let us know in the comments below did you like the original upgrade We love to hear Drive-By Movies. Tune in next week to Sequeled.